everyone, my name is Whitney and I am a dental hygienist. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today I have a special guest. We're starting. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is Dr. Daniel. And we are going to talk about whether or not you should be a dentist or a dental hygienist. Could it be neither? <laughs> I'm just joking, but not really. <laughs> So the big question is, everyone always, like we have a lot of students that follow us and I feel like they're either studying biology or chemistry, they know they want to do something in the health sciences and mm -hmm. they don't know if they want to do dentistry or dental hygiene. It's a very different decision, very different. What is your, t I mean, what, I know what I would say, but what would you say? I think, I think both of, of these professions could be really rewarding and you're basically doing the same thing. You're giving back, you're changing people's lives, you're changing people's health. You know, the mouth is connected to the rest of the body, so you're, you're impacting that as well. It depends on the lifestyle you wanna live. I think that's important. Ooh, I like that you started like that. Okay, because definitely, it's a different lifestyle. And even within being a dentist, you can own your own practice, you can be in a, a partner or an associate, like depending on what you want out of life. Exactly. So the big question I guess we should start with is schooling. For dental hygiene, there's a lot of different options to become a hygienist. Yes. You can get your associates, you can get your bachelor's, you can get an associate's and a bachelor's and something else. That's what I did. So mm -hmm. I went to a four year undergrad. I got my bachelor's in biology and chemistry. Mm. I had thought I wanted to be a dentist. So I was I thought I was gonna do pre dent, but then I, I never I never took the DAT or anything. <laughs> Because I realized I fell in love with, you know, when you, so I had to observe hours. I had to do observing hours for pre-dental because I thought I wanted to be a dentist. Right. And when I was observing the dentist, I always found myself watching the hygienist. I was always like, ooh. I was okay. so interested in prevention and I heard about like gum disease and then I saw some, some SRPs, deep cleanings, and I was like, ooh, I'm just something about the gums. <laughs> I mean, the cap, what, what dentists do restoratively is cool, but I just started feeling passionate. And in my mind, I said, no, you want to be a dentist, you want to be a dentist. But I just kept watching that yeah. hygienist. So I applied to dental hygiene school and said, and I thought, you know what, I'll try dental hygiene school. It's less schooling. And I thought, if I want to go back to be a dentist later, I will. But once I got into dental hygiene school, I was like, nope, this is it. This is what I'm doing. Regard long story short, it, it, so I did four years undergrad and then I did two years of dental hygiene school. Mm -hmm. So I have a degree in biology and chemistry and in dental hygiene. You can do it where you just have a degree, not just, but you only have a degree in dental hygiene where it can be a two year degree or a four year degree. Good to know that if Does it you make a difference? No. Okay. There you go. Good question. I have a whole video all about like what the benefits clinically, if you want to work in an office, no difference, right? But if there's other things you want to do, like teach or like do education yeah, or, or business marketing, different there's reasons to get the bachelor's, but or whatever you want to do, what comes from within. But regardless, if you get that two year degree, it's not going to usually only be two years. You still need a year or two of gen eds. So mm -hmm. it might be four years for oh. the associates anyway, but it might be more affordable because it's an associate's not a bachelor's. Long story short, it's between three and four years. Or if you did what I had did, six years, but then you get two degrees. So that's what I did. How many years of school is a dentist? So you never stop learning. So for those that think that, oh, I want to become a hygienist because it's only two years or three years, that's not the point of being a healthcare provider. Like you're always, every year you're learning. You're basically in school every single year of your life mm -hmm. until you stop practicing. Mm -hmm. And even so, like you want to educate yourself and become the best version of yourself. Going back to hygiene. I know people that went to hygiene school, became hygienists, men and women. It's not only for women. It, there's a lot of men that do an incredible job as hygienists. Mm -hmm. So shout out to all you trailblazers out there. Hygienists. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I don't, some people say Kai Jenna. It's kind of cool. I just call them by their first name. <laughs> no, that's right. I, just, I, I don't like to have names. I just have a few friends who they call themselves a Kai Jenna. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> and then they realize that they want to get, you know, become dentists, and that's fair enough. But another thing that you said, and I'll get into being a dentist. <laughs> um, I think prevention is the most beautiful part of healthcare. Prevention is cheaper. It is more efficient in your life. You know, you don't work backwards, meaning like you don't cure diseases, but you're preventing diseases from happening. So you are uh, at the forefront of prevention. And I think that's such a beautiful way of looking at it. She's not just a hygienist. She's preventing your life from becoming a problem uh, health wise. It's so nice. A lot of, yes, a lot of hygiene um, communities are saying, you know, yeah, like you just said, you're not just a hygienist, you're a prevention specialist. And that's, it's really important. And it's cool that you acknowledge that. So yeah, thank and you. And also like, you know, patients see the hygienist more often than they see the dentist. Yes. So the hygienist could actually 
catch diseases earlier, along with you know dental problems, they could catch systemic problems. Mm -hmm. You know, they could mm -hmm. catch diseases that are on your tongue, in the back of mm -hmm. your throat. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's always good to have someone that has your back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But come routinely. Yes. If you come once in a blue moon, it kind of defeats the, the purpose of, you know, going through that. I love it. Yeah, you're right. Systemic. We, we're trained to help you decide to find out if there's any sleep apnea, oral cancer. There's so many things we can decide. Oh, we can talk about this all day. I, I know. I'm like, uh oh, I'm getting off track. We got <laughs> to talk, talk about being done. I love yeah. how you are promoting to be a dental hygienist. That is great. But I'm very yeah, curious. The I think stress I'm... of dentistry. Become a dental <laughs> hygienist. So to become a dentist, first, you want to understand that this is something that you want to do for the rest of your life. It's not just like going through dental school and then, all right, like you are a professional. The education does it never stops. The you know affiliation with the health never stops. So you have to be really, really passionate uh, because this is a, a long, uh, a long investment. All right. So undergrad, mm -hmm. it normally is four years. Um, I, I was lucky enough to do it in three years. Oh. I was a chemistry major. Mm -hmm. I, I don't promote to be a chemistry major. <laughs> it, it, it requires a lot of work um, and. It's very technical, so if you guys like chemistry, it's great. But did you like chemistry? Is that why you chose it, or <coughs> did you want to be different? Because a the, lot of people you know do the, biology. You know the truth is, guys, and I learned this the hard way. Sometimes the shortest road isn't the best road. So to be oh, a chemistry okay. major, there was like eight classes, and bio bio major, there was like thirty classes. So I'm like eight versus thirty. I'd rather do the eight. <laughs> but those eight were. Uh, but those eight got. Bless me. Bless America. <laughs> you did it, though. You did it. Wow. Yeah. So uh, I was able to push through because I knew I wanted to be a dentist. Uh, so it's usually three or four years undergrad. Dental school is four years. Um, I don't know if maybe in Chicago there are some programs that are less than four years. Mm -mm, I think we only have four years as well. There's some like where you can do more if you want to specialize. Exactly. So four years. Uh, I'm a general dentist who specializes in cosmetics. So I had to do a residency program to work in New York. So I did a, about a year program at the Yale New Haven Hospital. Uh, if, if you wanted to specialize. So you, all, to, sorry, so all together, four years undergrad. Well, you did three. So for you, it's three. For me, it's, it was three, three plus four, seven, seven so eight years. Eight, eight years, okay. okay. Uh, but for the fair. general dentist, it would probably take nine years. Yes. If you want to practice here in New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to specialize, orthodontist, periodontist, it's another two, three, four years. It's like never ending. Yeah. You could be in school for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can work during it as well, in a sense, right? When you're specializing, yeah. you can say, but that's a good point how you said in Chicago versus in New York, because I know in uh, Los Angeles, in California, there's a lot of programs where it's three years undergrad and you could mm. go straight into dental school. So depending on your area, yeah. with dental hygiene as well, it could be longer or shorter. I know there's some dental hygiene accelerated programs that mm. you could do in like less than two years somehow. And it's a lot. You know what it is though? For me, uh, it's about finding the program that's going to help build who you want to become, right? So I went to NYU uh, dental school and I was told that, you know, NYU provides you a lot of patients, a lot of clinical hands-on approach, mm -hmm. a lot of outreaches to different underserved uh, areas where you mm -hmm. can practice even more. Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, was the most important. I did not want to become a teacher. I didn't want to learn the research behind things. I wanted to work with my hands because mm -hmm. I think that's the most important. Like, understanding the finesse with working with human beings and the connection and and becoming a, a provider. Yes. So NYU offered that to me. Uh, that's why I went to NYU. There's pro programs that maybe are cheaper, maybe not four years, but maybe three years. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on your philosophy and what you want to, you know, create and develop. Which is awesome. And you, as you could hear him talk, he's definitely an awesome human friendly he's all about the <laughs> he's all about the patient and that's very important you no, want someone fact, yeah. like him as your dentist right so i feel like and that really shows when um dentists want or when patients want to come see you right because yeah. they're looking forward to seeing you because you make them feel comfortable dentistry mm -hmm. is sometimes whether you're a hygienist or a dentist we're there to try to make it comfortable for you and not make you anxious or it has like a bad rep sometimes to go to the dentist but Right. Yeah, so, yeah. so having said that, that's a good swipe. segue into, <laughs> we talked about school, yeah. now the job. You own a business, you're a partner, yes. right? So you have a lot of time. Responsibility. Responsibility. Yes. As a hygienist, I, a lot of hygienists, at least in my area in the Midwest, work part-time mm -hmm. at a couple different offices. Mm -hmm. That's a very normal thing to do. It's, it's not unheard of to have a full-time job with benefits, but you're often going to be at a couple different places. However... It just depends, yeah. like with anything. But what I like is, as a hygienist, I clock in, I see my patients, and I clock out. I don't take anything home with me. Yes, I take memories home with me, but I don't. I don't. Some have... of those memories, let me tell you. <laughs> I 
we're not. No, a lot of them are good. You know, like I, I've been, I've been at the same office for like seven years now. So I am yeah. like very close with a lot of my patients, and exactly. it's just it's so cool to see them and help them and watch their gums go from not good to good. And we brought. Can them you to show health. them like? what not good is yeah. and then to good from not good to good we can bring your gums from poor health to good health and, and in the maintenance stage we see you maybe a little more frequently mm -hmm. or whatever the case it's just it's rewarding and more in more of a not only physical aspect but it's also rewarding that you're helping a human you know yeah. so i think we both have that in common whether you're a dentist or a dental hygienist because how you can transform someone's smile mm -hmm. i'm transforming their gums and their health you're transforming their whole not only aesthetics but also taking disease from their teeth that's 100 percent true something that you mentioned that i want to want to say as well yeah. that we have in common yeah. dentistry whether you're hygienist or a dentist is super physical oh yeah it's super <laughs> physical <laughs> you know like yeah you have to be in, in good shape not mm -hmm. to have problems mm -hmm. like your back could give up on you your neck could, could give up on you mm -hmm. i mean in my office here we have a chiropractor that comes once a week oh that's awesome we need it like it, yes. we get massages like once every two weeks yes. um your body is your temple and if you want longevity in this career mm -hmm. it's not just about like oh i'm, I'm very smart at dentistry mm -hmm. it's more like is your body capable of helping you have a long career. I love that mind-body connection, definitely. And again, whether you're a dentist or a hygienist, you are in a person's mouth, like hopefully you have better ergonomics than that, but you're still looking around. Your back around. kind of goes you over. Can, I know, I know, like I get closer and closer, especially for kids, right? You're like, when you're working with little kids, you're you're in there, like I try to help, like, which you know you're not supposed to do, but if you do yeah. that all day, every day, it hurts your body, which yeah. ends up hurting your mind <laughs> and it's all a thing. Yeah. So if you had to do it again, would you be a dentist? In a heartbeat. Oh, good. But this is because I grew up with two parents who are dentists. Okay. Um, they showed me a side of dentistry that was so beautiful. It wasn't just like the drill and fill of dentistry. It was connecting to humans first and changing their lives, whether it's in a health way, in an aesthetic way. And you build these relationships for many, many years. And I'm like, wow, yeah. like what, what other profession can I ever do this? Right. Uh, and the respect and the love that you get from that is incredible. So. I would do it in a heartbeat. I, I would I maybe skip all the schooling. I, did, <laughs> I, I honestly hated schooling. Yeah. Like it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. For those that are in school right now and undergrad or or you know planning to take the the big exam, the DATs or hygiene exam, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I hate this. It's okay. Like you're supposed to hate it. <laughs> like for those that like it, to me that's weirder than. <laughs> like school some people you know like but not everyone learns yeah, the same way yeah. not everyone <laughs> approaches education the same way so if you're like me yeah. and, and school is not something that you really love just get through it it's a stepping stone too many people like are, they look at the school and they go oh i'm not going to become a doctor because i don't like school well, the school shouldn't prevent you from becoming a doctor right. have the big goal in mind it's like you know it's like climbing right uh, that, i think that's a good analogy it's like climbing you see the top of the mountain you're like Oh man, I'll never get there. Just keep going. Just don't overthink it. And, and, and especially if you love and you see this as your, your life and your passion, just do it. That was said so beautifully. I have no words. <laughs> Thank you. No, that was really, it's so true. So whether you're a dentist or, I, I agree, same. Yes, if I was a, if I would do it again, yes, I would be a hygienist. Amazing. 100%. You want to go to people like us in general because of the passion more than anything else. Yeah. You know, uh, Whitney is not just a hygienist. She's connecting to her patients, she's building the rapport, and she's building lifelong connections that helps transform their lives. So you're not just a high, we're not just, it's a lot more than that. Not many professions are so routine, every six months, every three months, whatever it is. Uh, let's get back to, so <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's my fault. No, I like it. Oh, it's, it's my fault. It's, it's, no. the, it's the, New, it's the okay. New Yorker in me. It's okay, no, 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 no. I think we, uh, sh Chicago people, we, <laughs> Chicago we, we, we people. like to chit chat too. Um, so no, that's all. If you have any other questions, uh, leave comments below. I, I, we'll answer the best sure. we can. Yeah, I, sure. I'm sure there's so many other topics to cover in the dental world, but I think our end result is that if you are passionate and think you believe in yourself that you want to work with teeth in the mouth in the dental world, yeah. do it. If school is hard, get through it. You're going to love it. when School it's is going to be hard whether you're in <laughs> hygiene school or dental school. It's a lot of work. I mean, you have to, of course, you have to find your patients. You have to find patients to work on too. So on top of all the schoolwork, you have to find patients to bring in the chair. I don't know if every school is like that, but it's, it's a lot of busy extra stuff, but it is so worth it. And then you get a whole lifetime of doing what you love. And I think that's worth fighting for yes before we go we could just like how like can you make it what you want like i guess a day in the life of a dentist can you okay, work as many question. hours as you want yes. or 
What's your, yeah. You can work as many hours as you want. You can never work ever. You could uh, see X amount of patients. You could not follow up with your patients or you could follow up with the patients. You are the driver. Uh, the success is not determined based on the professions. It's determined based on how hard you're willing to work, how much you're willing to give. I don't work a nine to five. Uh, my hours are not nine to five. Sometimes I could be in the office finishing a makeover till like 11 p.m. at night. Uh, you do whatever it takes to help another human being, period. But that's my philosophy. So No, I agree. And same thing with dental hygiene. You can kind of, in a sense, make what you want of the career right. and your hours. I mean, you are a little limited to what the dental office is offering you if you work for a dental office. But, you know, you can find, like I said earlier, like a part-time job or you can do a full-time. There is the flexibility to, you could work one day a week if you wanted, if you want to be a parent or do another gig on the side. Like, there's a lot of different... If you want to be a parent, I just meant like it's flexible to your schedule. Yeah. Often you can find hours that work for you. Like he said too, you're well, if you want to stay till 11 PM yeah. helping what well, you can, there's so many options. So don't, don't think you have, I don't know. <laughs> no, you, 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 you don't necessarily don't, have to work at a private practice. This is a private practice. Yes, I work for me too. A private practice. Yes. So does Whitney. You can work for the government. You can work for the hospital. Yes, that too. I didn't even think of that. You could be so a many. teacher. You can work for the army. Uh, you can work for a sports team, that your favorite sports team. Yes, and if you don't want to work clinically, both of us love clinically, but yes. you can be an educator, you can work yes. in research, you can uh, work in marketing or ever. You can work for a dental company and sell dental products. You can, There's so sure. many. You can be an inventor. You could create your own brand. There's so many things. And now, like... Now, it's, now it's kind of cool for like dentists and hygienists to be on social media. That's how yes, we connected. Yes, so, you can make a YouTube channel. <laughs> become a YouTuber. <laughs> so make it, make it what it is. It's your life, and we are happy to welcome you into the community. If you want to join the dental or dental hygiene community, yes. Um, it, it, the more people that love it is important. So peace, love, and peace. Yes, thank we you. We did it. <laughs> But no, who, did it, who did it better, the hygienist or the dentist? <laughs> the person who does no, all the time. It's not a competition. <laughs>